for the next weeks, we want to kind of like just share with you kind of like some standalone ser- uh, sermons. We, we're, we're getting a little bit off for a couple of weeks from a, um, our series, and, and we'll launch. We're getting ready for, for our series that we would really love for, for you to invite families and, and your friends and whatnot. But we want to make sure that, um, you know, you're open to what God is speaking to us. And, and uh, today I, I want to talk to you uh, what to do when your strength dies. So help, help me out, brother. You got to be with me. We got to be with. There we go. So what should I do when my strength dies? And you say, man, what a title. What is going on with this? Let's, let's figure it out together. So if you go with me to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. This is a, one of the major prophets. Isaiah was very important. And, and the setup of, of this is that, you know, a, a united kingdom, a united kingdom of Israel, now it's, a, it's divided. Um, so you have people to the north, you have people to the, to the south, and um, Judah is in the south, and, and this, this prophet is, is there around that time. So he's going to speak about these different kings that are coming. I don't want to get so historical, but I don't always want to assume that, um, you know, people feel like when we're starting a church, like you got to really dumb everything too, too much. I'm like, no, there, we got a lot of smart people here to read the Bible. Amen? Amen. I want to read the Bible. I want to get to know this and get to learn about this. So I want to encourage you to know that you got, you got all these resources for you. Um, and what is the context? If you don't understand the context, it's going to be very hard for you to understand what's going on. Right? It's like if you go in the middle of a conversation, you usually don't know what's going on. Right? But if you know the context, then you're able to follow. And I want you to be able to follow. So uh, he starts saying this and he uh, brings up. This king, and we're going to get into that and what it means. So Isaiah says, in the year of the king Uzziah died, in the year that the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. We go on, brother. Let's go. The seraphim. Each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to one another, said, Holy, 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 holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Can you read that with me? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Let us pray. God, we pray that your word, Lord, will be uh, just clear to our hearts and our minds. And today you will speak to us because we're longing for your word right now, Father. Lord, we're longing for what you have to say. Not just a Bible reading, not a Bible study. We need the living, the living word of God in our hearts right now, Father. So I pray that you help me deliver it and help us to also hear you right now, Lord God. Even much so, Father, as we get ready for, uh, t- to put it into action. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, the, the, if you go back to for verse 1, I want you to think about what he's saying. And he has opened it up saying, when the year that the king Uzziah died, this is a guy that is setting something up for us. And I don't know if you understand what's going on because the name Uzziah means this. Can you please put it up? It's a combination of two words, and part of the word, the main part of the word is strength, is strong. It's, 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 that's the, the etymology, et, et, etymology of the word. The beginning of the word is strength. And if you read with me, in the year that the king Uzziah, you change that, and you say, in the year that my strength died, I saw the Lord. Think about that for a second. This is what the the hearers, the beginning, the first hearers, this is what they're hearing. In the year that my strength died, I saw the Lord. And this is where I want to encourage us to see what was King Josiah, not just his name meant strength, meant strength, but what was going on meant, meant something. For some of us that may know a little bit, or if you study a little bit of U.S. history, like there are certain presidents that people relate with prosperity in America, right? 
Oh, the Reagan years. Have you heard of those things? Like, people know the Nixon years. Like, yeah, Nixon. You know, like, you, you already have a connotation just based on the government that it went for. So when people he heard this, not only they heard, when my strength died, I saw the Lord. They heard, when King Uzziah, oh, what did he do? Oh, well, well he, he reigned for 52 years. He reigned at, when he was started at 16, he was the guy that brought prosperity to, his, to, to Judah specifically and built infrastructure. The, the rain, uh, peace reign. He was able to gain new cities back to Judah. So there is rebuilding that is happening. There is prosperity that is happening. So he's saying when all that stuff died, I saw the Lord. And let me bring it to us right now. See, many times, and, 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 and Brother Sean is speaking a little bit about this as we were worshiping God in songs. See, many times we're just thinking about God being with us when everything is going well. But what do we do when our strength is dying? What are we doing when we feel that there is nothing else for me to do but to quit? Like the only way out. Have you been in that space? When it feels like the only way out is just quitting. I've been there. I've been there. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I've written my letter of resignation a couple of times. Never submitted it, but I've written it. There's moments when you feel in your marriage like, man, this thing ain't going nowhere. This, this is hard. Parenting, your finances. You see stuff in, in your bank account every day like, this thing ain't growing. I, I know how much I get paid next month. So when the strength, go back to that verse, please, with, with, with the other line in, in, in red. When my strength died, I saw the Lord. Do you see a relationship there? Because that sounds a little bit like a dichotomy there. And these people are hearing this, and I want you to think it with me, because King Uzziah brought many great things. And every time there's a transition, a leadership transition in your job, when your boss that hired you leaves or retires, what, are the, what, what is the rumor around the office? Hmm, what's going to happen now? I don't know. Hmm, I don't know what's going to happen. Hmm, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a little bit of, of, of insecurity. When the leadership changes, there's a little bit of insecurity because especially if it was something that did a good job. Especially with somebody that you liked a lot. Are you with me there? So the, the day that the, that the, the strength that died, I saw the Lord. And this is the whole message today. When our strength dies, we are ready to see God's revelation in our lives. When we see that our strength is dead, completely dead, when we have nothing else to go, we really realize, like, man, this is rock bottom. Have you ever felt that you hit rock bottom and then you realize there was still something under even more? Like, you go to the depth of the sea. I've never been, but I've seen it in videos where I've been like, man, this is deep. And it's like, no, no, there's a bigger deep. There's like the other trenches, like it's even deeper. And it's so deep that, that even scientists got to check. You, you feel like, oh, this is it. <laughs> you have a death in the family, you're like, oh, this is the worst thing. And then I don't know why some people have said that. I don't know if this is something. It, oh, usually those things come in three. And then you hear another uncle and another, like it just keeps going. Like what, what, God, really? And the moment that the strength dies, I feel God is ready to reveal himself to us. The question is, are we ready to recognize that? Because I want to invite you to church to, to, to develop this, this, this um, character when it comes to resiliency. Being resilient is being able to get, get down and get back up again. And if people, I, I really dislike when people call and prophesy negatively on our generation and say, oh, people are too fragile. You know, this is like, you know, the, 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 the easiest, um, uh, the, the, the generation that, that gets, um, man, I, I don't know what happened with my words today. Like, they, they get offended too easily. Like, they don't really, you know, everything you say is something against them. And I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I, I feel quite the opposite. I feel quite the opposite. Is that when you know that you're going through so many things, you, you realize like, well, where am I going to get my strength? Where, where, where is the, the pain coming from? And I'm going to call it out. People don't like it when we call out our pain. People feel uncomfortable when somebody's crying next to you. We're just talking about that, right? This is a group of brothers were gathering. Like, people feel weird when somebody's crying and mourning around you. 
When people have no strength around you, like, you don't know what to do. Like, should I say something? And we don't know. We don't have any words. So we say, like, stupid things in a, in a moment of mourning and sadness. We don't realize that what God wants to do is when our strength is over, when we don't have any more strength, he wants to reveal himself to us. He wants to reveal himself to us. And that revelation is this. Go again to verse 3. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. I'll tell you something. When I am in a place of despair, I don't know if this happens to you, but, man, it's like a funk. Like, everything looks negative to me. Like, I don't like nothing around me. And this is something that we got to watch for because in the moment where our strength is no more, we tend to criticize and critique everything around us. We don't like the people that really love us, and we don't realize that the whole earth is full of God's glory. And when our strength is dead, it has died completely, God is saying, hey, I'm about to reveal myself to you, but I'm about to reveal myself to you holy, holy, holy. Only two times in the whole Bible, God presents himself, or the Bible says that God is holy, holy, holy. Revelations 4 and in this passage right here. And it's the one attribute that it comes to God the most. Over 600 times it says that God is holy. That he's complete, that he's enough, that he's everything to us. And in the moment where we feel that our strength is no more, God is telling, you, telling us, I am holy and the whole earth is full of my glory. Think about that for a second. Because if there's one thing I cannot do, when I'm in a place with no strength, is see beauty. I can't, I can't, I can't admire beauty. When you're depressed, when you're in a place of, of, of the bottom of the bottom, you can't see beauty around you. And I think that God is telling Isaiah something he's telling us. Listen, in the time that your strength died, you will see me. I will reveal myself to you. But how am I going to reveal myself to you? I'm going to reveal myself to you wholly. I'm a whole God. I'm a God that is complete. I'm a God that is enough for you. And I will show you, go back to that verse, please, that it shows, I'm going to show you that the whole earth is full of my glory. So I'm going to open up your eyes so you can see God's goodness. I'm going to open up your eyes so you can see God with you. And when you feel that you have nothing, full disclosure, when you feel like you, you, you have, you, you, the money is low. Have you ever been there in the bank account? You just wish, like, God, do something. Then the Lord reminds me, it's like, but your things are paid for, right? I'm like, you're right, God. I have a house, right? You're right, God. I got health. Yeah, you're right, God. You start seeing that beauty. And when you start seeing God's goodness, you start seeing his beauty, and you start seeing his glory. Because, like, what is glory? Glory is God's beauty. And at this church, we want to be about Jesus being enlarged, magnified. Oh, these big words. Well, magnify. What does it mean to magnify God's name? To glorify God's name. Making God noticeable to other people. That's what it means. Because nobody is going to really see a God that they cannot see. They won't really understand a God they cannot see. But they, who, who, guess who they know? They know you. And they know me, and they know all of us. So when they see you, and they see the beauty of God in you, that reminds them, like, wow, I see what you're going through. And you're still like that, like you're still standing and being steady and remaining in God. That is God's glory. That is God's beauty. That is what God wants to show and signify in us. And I hope that we will pursue his beauty around us. That we will allow God to really just show up around us. Because Psalms 23 says this, and 27, verse 13 and 14 says this. And I love this verse. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness. Look. See the reference of goodness and looking and seeing and revelation upon the goodness of the Lord in this land right here. It's not about the church that was only praying and preaching like, oh, we're going with Jesus and in heaven everything's going to be good. Amen for that. I believe that there's something better coming up. But guess what? I believe that I will see the goodness of God in this land. Anybody can say amen right now? I will see God's goodness right now in my life. 
But this is the, the key. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Take, let, let your heart take courage. Again, Isaiah is telling the people, uh, he's preparing his calling. He's telling them the narrative. He's saying, when the year that my strength died, I saw the Lord. Are you ready to say that? Because that's the part that we don't want to, to go for or go through. Because if this one thing we got to start fighting for is fighting the voice, the inner voice that disqualifies us. That voice disqualifies you when you were in kindergarten and you were just learning the ABC. And then it disqualifies you when you started college and you don't, whatever, whatever stuff you went through. Or when you started that new job, you're like, am I really going to be able to make it here a week? And it keeps again and again creeping in us. And what God is telling us is this. Look, look what happened to Isaiah. In the year that my strength died, I see the Lord. Then he sees God, holy, holy, holy. The whole earth is full of his glory. And this is what he says. Number four, uh, verse four says this. And the foundations of the threshold shook. He continues to, to, to tell us the revelation. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said... And this is what he said. Go to the next one, brother. Easy reading version. It says, I was frightened and said, oh, no. I will be destroyed. I am not pure enough to speak to God. And I live among people who are not pure enough to speak to him. But I have seen the king, the Lord, all-powerful. Back in these times, people were afraid, frightened to see God. To see God face to face, there's still not a revelation that was full like in Jesus Christ. So they're like, whoa, 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 yeah, like, I'm going to die. I certainly would die because I have seen God. And I'm speaking to the church right here. I'm speaking to, so, to those of you that have already connected to this place. Those who are online and those who are here today. Those that may be in another place, but you know the goodness of God. Listen, when you experience God... And you take that step forward, but then you kind of mess up. Anybody have messed up after you met Jesus? You know what I'm saying? Like, you mess up. But a real mess up. Like, you know. Like, you can tell. Sometimes we mess up and we don't really, like, recognize, ah, it's okay. No, this one is like, wow, I messed up. You feel like these steps are backwards now. I don't know if it happens to you, but, like, that's it. I don't think... I don't think I should continue on. I don't think I should. I, I, could, I shouldn't really be trying to do this Christian thing. I don't think it works for me. It works for this other guy, but not for me. You know, and, and, and the next thing that it's telling us is that that voice that he heard in this process, verse 6 tells me this. That this other angel, the seraphim, comes and flew and having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongues from the altar... Verse 7 says, and he touched my mouth and said, behold, this has touched your lips. Please underline this. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin is atoned for. Your guilt, go, go back, go back. Oh, no, that's fine, that's fine. Leave it there. Thank you, brother. Oh, there you go. Your guilt was taken away. Your sins were erased. Your sins, your guilt was taken away, and your sins were erased. And to me, that's smacking me in the face because you were just telling me about an amazing revelation of God. Anybody, any mortal would love to have a revelation of God. Guess what? You have had already a revelation with Jesus. There's a reason why you're here. Somebody brought you to this place, and that was God. It was not your wife. It was not your husband. It was not anybody. It was you and God. God motivated you to start walking with him. You said yes because something took your heart. It don't matter the intentions that first got you here. You already seen the goodness of God in your life. But there is sometimes where the strength just goes too down because of our own guilt and our own sin. You know what guilt does to us? It wants to make us hide. And this is what came to me as, as, a, as a little illustration Imagine you are in running clothes, like in workout clothes, right? Imagine you are in like just, you know, your just normal attire. You're like when you're running and you're doing exercise, like the hair is not really like you don't really care about the hair situation, right? 
Like, it's not. And then that day, that moment, you get invited to the Met Gala. <laughs> Come on, everybody's like, and another, like, you know, it's like, like, everybody is in their best, the best, the best, the best designer clothing. This is, an, this is another level. And you're just there <laughs> with your running shoes and with, like, the hair all over the place. I know that might be a style one day, but I know the Met Gala, I haven't seen it yet. Like, you know, even people like that have a certain, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is a different, different standard that day. <laughs> I don't want to put, you know, my wife in the spot, she's not here, but you know what I'm talking about. I see her out, and you know what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, I can't go in there. Look at me. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, look at me. Like, guys, we don't really care much. That's why we need our wives to tell us, like, please don't go out that way. You know, like, you look like a clown. Thank God for my wife. Well, I'll tell you what happened to me for real. So the other day, my wife's birthday, and um, she just wanted to walk or, or bike. She wanted to bike the well, George Washington Bridge. We, we didn't really plan it well, so it's hard to bike it with kids. So whatever, we walked it. And I was like, hey, let's book a hotel. Like, let, let's, just, let's just get out from, like, so, so we booked a hotel. Not, not that bad one. Like, a little, not, not too much. Like, kind of like in the middle, but nice. So I came back with, like, looking all beat up, right? some food that I had, like, extra from, like, some restaurant we ate. I didn't think about how I looked. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> so I go to the guy. I just wanted to ask, like, if they had, like, a fridge in the room because I hadn't really seen it. And then he looks at me. He's like, are you delivering the food? <laughs> like, no, I'm a guest. But for that rejection, right? And then I'm like, bro, like, have you looked at yourself how you look right now? How many times you felt like that before you, when you, when you come to God? You come to the church like, oh, I, don't, I, don't have, I don't look right. I don't feel right. I messed up. You allow guilt, makes you want to hide. And then you see other people, and this is what something I learned a long time ago. What is the problem with us is that I judge myself. I compare myself with you with the things that I don't know about you. And I compare the things that I don't know about you with the things that I know about myself. You're never going to win that way. Because I know certain things about my, myself that you, don't, that you don't know. Same thing with you. If you always compare my, yourself, like, oh, Pastor Lee, but like, I remember one day somebody saw me a little upset with my wife here at church. They're like, yo, thank you. I thought you never had a fight with your wife. I'm like, were we fighting? I didn't, know, like, like, I didn't even notice that. But the reality is that we are people, and we are people that are mortal, that God decides to show his goodness to us. That is the mystery of the gospel, that we're broken, but not that you're broken where you came in. Oh, no, I've been coming to church now. Now I'm good. No, no, the fight that you're going to continue to have is that now God is calling you, but you're going to say, God, did you know what I did three years ago? Did you remember what I just did yesterday night? And God is saying, listen, I am holy. I'm going to give you my holiness. The holiness does not come from you. It comes from God. But he's telling you this. Listen, he's going to sanctify us. He's going to put some coal that comes from the altar, from what he builds. And now he's saying, now I'm going to make you different. And your guilt, wow, I, I, that hit me hard. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says this. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 says this. Go for it. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. God will completely make us new. He will do it. Next verse, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12. For I will be merciful towards their iniquities, their sins, their faults. And I will remember their sins no more. And I will remember your sins no more. Do not let guilt disqualify you. Church, we're ready. To, the momentum that God is building here, you know the only thing that's going to take us out? And this I learned from the chaplain of the Yankees. This, 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 this pastor one day, he told us this. The only thing that could disqualify you is not going to be the devil. The devil got nothing on us. Nothing is going to disqualify us. But that sin in us. That's the thing that's going to, that guilt is what's going to, you disqualify yourself. It's who you see yourself in the mirror. But what God is inviting us to say, hey, listen, he remembers our sins no more. And when your strength is not there, God is calling us to say, Lord, here I am. 
verse 8. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. And I hope you're following with me. Because I'm just going down the, the chapter. Chapter 6, you saw how he started. When my strength died, this is what happened. I saw the Lord. And I saw him in an amazing way. But guess what? I felt that he was too big. And when you admire God's beauty, we start distracting ourselves from the problem. And we see how great our God is. But the, here's the response. And this is what I want to get you to it. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? So here comes the calling. Here comes the response. The revelation is given. There has to be a response. Whatever you see up to this point in this church, there's a lot to grow. There's a lot to do. But whatever you see up to this point, it was because somebody was called in a revelation and somebody said, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Somebody said, here I am, Lord. And you are here. I want you to remember this. You already said to God, here I am, Lord. The question for us is, what else is God calling us into? What is the next revelation that he's ready to give us? Because this right here is the revelation of God. But God is putting something in your heart. God is putting something in your life. And he's asking us, listen, who am I going to send? Is anybody here going to say, God, send me? I could do this. I got this. If you're calling me to do something, I see some hands. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Think about it. Think about what God is calling you to do. Well, I'm too young. Well, he got you because he wants something different. He don't want to give what he gave to Pastor Lee, but he wants to give to you and what you guys do. So what God is inviting us to do is this. Listen, when you hear that voice of God, when you hear the call of God, are you ready to answer? Let me tell you this. So my dad was a pastor. I became a pastor. I used to have a boss before I, came, I became a uh, uh, pastor full time. I used to do video editing for a guy in Hoboken. And I remember he told me, he's like, oh, he's kind of like a, it's like a family business, right? You understand, Irish Jewish guy, you know, he understood it in money, and he, he did a lot of money with, like, trade shows and whatnot, and, and he had better days financially, right? So they, they, those people that had good days financially, like, they used to vet a lot. Like, they, they get to vet a lot with, like, random people. He vented a lot with me about how he's not making the money he used to make before. Either way. So... He would see everything in financial terms. And I remember telling him, I was like, no, um, the, 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 the reality is I felt that calling of God myself. See, my brother, he's also, you know, the son of my dad, but he's in the Department of Defense. My, my sister, is, she has a, a small business, and it's not the way that happens. So when, when it comes to my kids, I don't want my kids to be like, you got to be in ministry. You got to be a specific ministry that your dad is. What I want to train my children is that if one day God calls them, they will listen to God's voice and say, here I am, Lord. That's all. I want them to recognize, like Samuel, say, listen, I'm not calling you. But can we help our children, the next generation, on their own to know that God's voice is there and that God is calling us? Because when God calls, I think we should answer. What do you think? What do you think? When God calls your phone... When somebody calls us now, it's just more important. We were just talking about that. We're talking about how, like, you know, everything is text now. So when somebody calls me, I'm like, I, I always do this. I always, like, pick up the phone, like, hello? Like, it's really, like, what just happened? Like, what's up there about, like, somebody from the community just called me yesterday. And I was like, bro, like, I only text this lady. Like, why is she calling me? And he's like, oh, I just wanted to tell you, there's like free groceries and it's really high quality here at Lafayette Park. And tell your members of the church. I was like, oh, wow, thank you so much. Like, you know, like, I, it did mean something different. Like, she wanted urgency. She wanted you to know. Like, she wanted to let me know. And it, and it blessed me. I, we couldn't make it because it was last minute. But, but the fact it was a call, you're like, hey, what's going on? Is everything okay? Oh, I just called. I just want to see how you're doing. Listen, God is calling us. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 through 11. This is one of my favorite verses. One of my favorite verses, and I'm closing almost. Look at this, because I will not probably be able to give you all the advice in the world, but listen, I, I feel like this is, this is something that will help you, and I hope it does. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 through 11. It says this, and it's, it starts with, with a, a really bad 
bad sentence. We don't like this one. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, grace is a, an undeserved gift. Who has called you, underline called me. And say, say to your heart, God has called me. See, when I think that the pastor called me to do something, that's why, honestly, I never like to push nobody to do nothing. Because people, people know how to follow directions. But when God puts something in your heart, it goes beyond. People will follow directions temporarily. But when God is the one that calls you, it don't matter if you see people around you doing it. It don't matter what goes on. You know by conviction that God is calling you. And you're going to do it because it's with him. You got that commitment with him. It says, in his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore you. Can you say with me, restore, confirm. Say with me, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. That's the progression. Restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Please don't quit when God is just in the process of restoration for your life. Please don't quit. Please don't quit. Because, listen, it's going to be a lot of times where your, your strength dies. That the first thing, you, you just step one. Step one. God said, don't quit yet. Because after you get restored, he's going to confirm you. Confirm you. How many of you need that confirmation sometimes? Hey, I got this thing on the agenda. I love people to do that because I sort of love that part. Can you confirm? Yes. And you feel more assured. Like, okay, we're, we're on. Don't stop there in the process of confirmation. What is he going to do? You're going to feel weak. Because now you're consistently working. Now you've already been here for a couple of years. You know what I'm talking about? Now it's already been months. It's already been weak. You've been steady in some things. God already confirmed you. Now he's saying, I'm going to strengthen you. Because you're going to feel weak. I'm going to sanctify you because you're going to feel weak. And then God, I want God to establish me. I want God to, to root me. Last but not least, chapter 7. This is something that stuck out to me as I saw, like, chapter 6. It's beautiful. It's a lot of great things. You know, the king has died. Then it's a new king. You know what happens is this is a process. And it's going to continue battle. So there's a new king that comes in. And now he has new battles to fight. When God moves you to something He's always going to bring you into another, another place that you have to battle. And when our, our strength dies, we need to go back to God. And this is what he tells this king. Isaiah go back to, so it goes back to this king. Now it's no longer Isaiah taking the role of what he was called to do. He was already executing what he needs to execute. But he's telling to this king, this is what God tells him. And say to him, be careful, be quiet, do not fear and do not let your heart be faint. Let's go to the next one. Be careful. Say with me, be careful. Be quiet. Do not fear. And do not let your heart be faint. That's something for you to keep, keep in your mind. It's not at the beginning. This is just telling you, like, like, we're already continuing. We got some people that have already said to God, here I am. And I don't want you to get scared, but when you say, here I am to God, you, you, you're going to feel um, anxious about what you do. And God is telling you, hey, be careful. Take care of yourself. You know what I'm saying? Take care of yourself. Nobody's going to take care of you like that. Don't, don't just expect your wife to do it, your, your parents to do it, the people that take care of you to do it. Say, you know what? I, I'm going to be careful. I, I'm going to put part of in my effort, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put something. I'm going to put some energy. I'm going to put some, some effort from me to make sure that, that I see what's around me. I'm not going to walk like, like a maniac. I'm going to look around. I'm going to see where, where are the rocks that will stumble. I'm not going to set myself up for failure. Hello. I'm not going to put myself in a predicament where I know I'm not going to succeed. I'm going to look for the best terrain. I'm going to move to the best position. I'm going to get to what God wants me to get to. Be quiet means be at peace. Don't be anxious. I'm super anxious about a bunch of stuff. And what God is telling me, you got you to gotta just chill. Do not fear. Do not let your heart faint. Listen, let me close with this. And I want to invite you to, I want to invite you to 
please stand with me. I want to bless you as you go today with, with a song that has just been in my heart right there. But go, go back, go back. Just think about this for a second. When my strength died, I saw the Lord. When you have no strength, God is ready to show up in your life. And I don't know if you feel that your, your arms are heavy, but I wonder if you could just lift up your hands to God today. Say, God, thank you because when my strength died, when I had no strength, I, I could just rely on you. Man, when you feel like you just hit the rock bottom, God just say, like, I'm about to give you a revelation right now. I'm about to show you that I'm holy, and I'm about to show you my beauty, my beauty. God, help, help, help them, Lord. Help them to see your beauty in the midst of the struggle. Help them to see your glory, God, in the midst of the pain. Help them, God, to see your goodness in the midst of everything they're going through. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, because when our strength failed, Lord, you were there for us. God, because when things weren't good, you're still there, God. Lord, I pray for those online. Lord, may your heart be with them right now, Lord Jesus. Embrace them right now, Lord. Thank you. Now, my God, we, we believe in you, Jesus. And I don't know if there's anybody that is close to anybody that has a, a hand raised. So you just respectfully put your hand just in their shoulder and just... Help somebody feel that God is, is with them right now. Lord, your power, Lord, and your power right now, Lord Jesus. Mm, Lord. Jesus, right now, Lord, we're praying, Lord. God, when they feel that there is no more strength, God, there's no more strength, Father, right now. To know, Lord Jesus, that you have prepared a table. You have prepared a table, God, right now, my Lord. My Lord, in their struggle, in their pain, Jesus, just remind them, Lord, Father, to not let go, to not quit, to continue to be strengthened in you. In the moment, Lord God, with things just, I, I have no idea, Lord, what they're going through, my God. But you know, you know their tears, you know their laughter, you know, Father, may they see beauty in the midst of the pain and the struggle. And may the goodness of God, Lord, be, be more noticeable when there's so many, so many bad news, God. Will you bring, Lord, your goodness in the forefront? Can you, Lord, may they know your heart, Father, that you are close to those who call upon your name. Lord, and they, they're not, they're not by, on, on their own. They're not by themselves, God. You, you're with them right now. Lord, when we are, have no strength, we call out to you, Jesus. We call out to you, Jesus. You are the source of our strength. You are the source of our strength, God. And we thank you today. Church says amen. 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 Amen.